Hey, and welcome to the final installment of this uh, car game tutorial. Within the previous videos, I've shown you how I've done all of the sound effects and the music for this game. So as I said before, the game consists of the main three elements, which are the cars themselves, uh, the music system, the UI, and the atmospheres. But in this last episode, I want to just show you, if anything, one of the most important steps before finishing the game, which is actually the uh, finalization and the optimization. So with, with audio, it will take up a few megabytes or what have you of storage, but you don't want it to take up a lot of storage because obviously the, the higher the, the storage that it takes obviously the more storage the game will take on disk and then obviously if a lot of megabytes are used at one certain point that will really overclog the RAM as well because obviously when they're playing the games themselves uh, that might be the only thing that's open on their computer uh, they might just have the game loaded uh, or they might just have one other tab open which could be like a file explorer or it could be like Chrome or any other browser but the problem is Nowadays, uh, some people do things as well as play the game. So obviously, you got like a lot of streamers now. You might have people on like Zoom calls or any other sort form of calls whilst they are playing the games. Obviously, in, in all aspects of the game, you want it to be as optimized as possible. I, I don't want to sort of have a go at any companies, uh, especially this company because they make very good games, as uh, Call of Duty. But I did notice the other day when I downloaded it for myself uh, that the brand new installment Cold War is like 100 gigabytes, uh, which is an awful lot for a game. And I'm not saying you don't get a lot for the game, you get a hell of a lot for the game, but you want it to be as optimized as possible because 100 gigabytes gets a lot for a game. Uh, and then obviously I, I've, I've had to put an extra storage in my Xbox to actually just play the game. Uh, so it can get very frustrating if one game is taking a lot of that uh, memory consumption. So uh, obviously the, the least uh, memory I can uh, take with the audio, uh, and I say as possible, uh, because obviously I could use a very bad, say, conversion technique, uh, which converts it from WAV to a very awful sound uh which then obviously that will alter the actual audio of the game, which you don't want. You really don't want that. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the things that I've done to make this as optimised as possible. So here we actually have the conversion settings editor. So I've broken it down into two separate ones. Uh, one for the sound effects and another one for the music. Uh, the only difference mainly is that I wanted the music to have a little bit of a better quality. Because that's playing a lot of different frequencies uh, and obviously is mastered. Uh, so especially like in the highs you don't want a uh, crap conversion rate because obviously then the high frequencies will sort of be a little bit more muffled and it won't sound as ex exciting or invigorating uh, as normal. So obviously what it is doing here is actually taking the original file size which obviously because they are WAVs uh, is like like for their example this song here the Imagine Dragons and Kenny West Radioactive Kadeco edit um, obviously because that is quite a long song uh, it, it was 78 megabytes at once, which is an awful lot for one song. But as you see here, uh, I've added a, uh, for Mac and Windows, because obviously it, it's for both of them. But with quality of 4, I've actually used a Vorbis editor. And to be honest, hearing the WAV version compared to the MP3 version, if you really, really focus on it, you can hear a difference. But... Uh, when you're actually playing the game and you hear the songs, it doesn't feel like any quality has been taken out of it. So obviously you've got to be careful when converting it. And luckily with Wise, it converts it when it puts it into the sound bank, which is absolutely awesome. Because obviously if, if I converted them to MP3, for example, and then put them into Wise, um, obviously then it would go, the actual file itself would be MP3. Uh, and then obviously I've destructed, if you would, the uh, WAV version of that audio file. So all this does here is it, is it keeps the WAV one intact, but when it's pointed into the sound bank, it just uh, converts it very quickly, to be honest with you. Then you get a very, very reduced file size. So you saw a couple episodes ago when I was doing the music and I was showing you the uh, profiler. Uh, at one given time, especially even with the big uh, dubstep, radio which has like eight or something songs in it uh the actual uh memory that it was taking at one point 
in the audio was only like 50 megabytes. Uh, when you consider that, that was the file size of one song uh, that was in that playlist, that's very good. So if I open up the sound effects here, uh, I've done a very similar thing for that as well. Uh, as you can see here, obviously because they are very much shorter file sizes, uh, they're not very big at all. But, but even this one, uh, the inside car, which was quite a long loop. Uh, audio file. It's gone from 2.7 megabytes to 205 kilobytes, uh, which is a massive reduction. Uh, but as I say, after the conversion, you can't really hear the difference. And, and you can see here, it, it just dramatically reduces the file size, but not much of the quality. So the only difference here is that I've chosen a quality of free just to, because say you like sound effects, um, obviously they're important. I'm not saying they're not important, but Maybe like they don't need the full frequencies range as much as music. As I say, these conversion techniques are just key uh, to, to basically optimize the storage of that. This is like the main thing of the storage. Uh, I'll go over a couple things in a minute of how I've like optimized it for CPU performance and what have you. But yeah, I, I remember like the first game that I did uh, um, on my few, first tutorial on this channel. Uh, I didn't use any conversions uh, and I wish I would have now because I, I didn't, I, I sort of went over it in the course, but I didn't realise how much of an impact uh, that had on the actual game. So I'm, I'm really glad that I did it for this game. And I think when I didn't optimise this, uh, when I just had everything filing into one sound bank and everything was still in the WAV format, he was taking something ridiculous like almost one gig of RAM just on the audio really key and important to actually optimize and convert the audio before putting them into sound banks so one thing that i just touched on very very briefly in the last little segment was uh, sound banks so because this game's only small there wasn't really much use to have a lot of sound banks so for example like here all the sound effects are have everything from the atmospheres to the car uh, but as i say but because the file sizes are only like so many kilobytes it doesn't make sense, especially in this game, just to actually separate them. It would probably take a lot more effort to separate them. And don't get me wrong, if, if it come to it, I, I could do it. It would just take a lot of coding and a lot of, obviously, validation checks to make sure the right and wrong sound banks are being loaded and unloaded. So, for example, like one would be the atmospheres here. So, obviously, it would be pointless loading the bird's atmosphere in a course that doesn't have the birds. But because it's only, like, two megabytes of safe, just for now, I just left it as it is because I didn't see that much point in it. Um, but obviously, if, if this game was actually going to be brought to market, I would put the effort in to do that. Uh, it, it's just because I wanted to obviously learn from this experience of doing this game, I decided not to because I know it would be very tedious and very strenuous. But as I say, the main one was like the uh, music sound banks, uh, because as I say, with them being a good few megabytes, like 20 odd megabytes. Say, as I said before, like I didn't want dubstep uh, songs to be loaded and ready to go on the uh, CPU when they weren't needed. So if like drum and bass was playing, or even if the radio was off, it's no point having, say, dubstep sound bank loaded. And obviously with, with me changing the stations and obviously having to change what current station we're on, it was quite easy to implement them sound banks. As, as you've seen, it's just a matter of loading and unloading the correct one uh, along with the actual station uh, and what have you. Just to do that, as you can see here, it only just has the play and stop uh, of that certain station uh, for the certain sound bank. So it only loads them audio files in that container. But obviously, as I say, you do want a lot more sound banks in bigger games because obviously you'll have more levels, you'll have more cars. Uh, and, and I mean, it, it, it would get to a point where like a, a certain, uh, like almost every car might have like their own different sound bank. Because it would be, because say like Forza, for example, they have like hundreds of cars. And if you're only driving one car, it wouldn't make sense to have all the other ones loaded. Or, or say, for instance, as a race, because obviously if uh, if another racer has another car next to you, obviously you would need to load that one. But I reckon it would get to a point where only them certain sound banks are loaded, because obviously there's no point loading a Bugatti Veyron if you're driving a Hyundai i30 and everyone around you is driving a Hyundai i30. You, you know what I mean? So in bigger games like that, I could really understand like splitting into different sound banks and what have you, but... Just with this, I just decided to do it for the music and obviously experiment a little bit more with sound banks, see how they work and what have you. 
But yeah, obviously, it, if I ever work in bigger games in the future, I would do more sound bank management uh, and obviously do more in Unity to load and unload banks at certain points. So one other thing uh, audibly that I wanted to do for this game is actually uh, something called menu states. So as I, as I said before, like if you pause a game, uh, you don't want all of the sound effects to be to be still going on. So for example, like if I'm midway through a race and I get a phone call and I press the pause button, uh, I don't want the music to still be blaring at me and the engine still roaring at me, uh, for example. So I've created this little state group called Menu State and basically it just alters the filters and the volumes uh, of these main audio buzzies for the music and sound effects. So the best way to show these menu states is obviously if I actually play the game. Uh, so if I click play and... And obviously it's going on and I pick a bit more for the song. So obviously you can hear like a midway through the race you've got a lot of things going on here. But if I press pause, you'll notice that everything now has been ducked and has been filtered and a little bit more reverbs come on into that music. And as I say, that's like if you take a phone call, you don't want, well, well me personally, I don't want everything in this game to go dead because you can still see like the uh, backdrop of the actual race going on. Um, but basically uh, what I wanted to do here was just create that little attenuation to say that I've paused the game my, my focus isn't on this right now, if you get what I mean. And obviously when I resume... Obviously everything goes back to full. Then obviously it, 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 just, it just adds to the pause, because obviously you don't want everything to be in your face because you aren't interacting with it, you aren't interacting with the car, you aren't driving around the course. So it, it's pointless to still have that rolling in the background. Uh, so that's all, it just attenuates the volume and what have you. One of the last things that I just wanted to show you is one problem I had, and, and this really highlights the importance of the profiler. Uh, if, if you don't use this in Wise, it, which I didn't use to all that much, but I've really learned how important it is. Um, because obviously here you get to see what exactly what's going on. So when I was like unloading and loading the uh, sound banks a couple of episodes ago, you could clearly see what it was going on. And then obviously if you're having any problems, you can see what's going on as well. And, and like here, it will show you uh, what is currently playing at the minute. So if the car was going, it would have a little box here with the car. If like the drift coins were going, it would have a little box here with the drift coins, so on and so forth. And one thing that... The, the, again, uh, when I was playing it, it absolutely seemed fine, but the profile it actually showed me was wrong uh, was the boops of the drift going. So if, if you aren't familiar, just have a check back with the last episode. And that's basically uh, this little sound effect. That obviously increases with the pitch as it goes. Now, one thing uh, that I did wrong with this, uh, as you can see here, the actual sound effect itself is just a singular, uh, I keep on saying boop, but boop if you would. <laughs> Obviously nothing special or what have you. But one big mistake that I made is that that singular boop, uh, I was firing from Unity itself. So... When the score increased, and I think at every five coins that the player earns, it would actually fire off that uh, event. So as you can imagine, when the score is increasing rapidly, uh, it would fire about 100 events uh, within the space of maybe one or two seconds, which obviously really isn't good because then you are like going from Wise back to Unity, from what from Unity back to Wise, from Unity back to Wise, you know what I mean? And it got into this cycle within a couple of seconds. And um, this graph, like showing like the total number of voices, when that when that boop, just that simple little boop sound effect was going on, would just skyrocket. You know, because obviously you, you are firing so many events at the same time just for one noise. Um, to be honest, it got ridiculous. And obviously then that that up, that up, that up the CPU. Obviously. It, because obviously I've got an optimized PC and what have you, it only took up about one or two percent of the PC, but in maybe like 
uh, were systems, uh, it obviously it wouldn't be optimized and it would take up a lot more CPU. Um, but as I say, when that was in Unity, I couldn't tell the difference because it was still firing off the sound effect. It was going up in pitch. I was like, okay, that sounds fine. It wasn't until I was just checking something else in the uh, profile that I noticed like here in the chain, it just had like event fired, boop, event fired, boop, event fired. And I was like, why is this happening? So in, instead to combat that, uh, I decided to actually loop uh, the boops. As you can tell now, so it, it does all the looping within Y's. It only actually fires the event once when it starts drifting and then obviously stops it when it stops drifting. It, again, I wouldn't have known that was going on un, unless I would have seen the profile, which is which is mad when you think about it uh, because, and, and this is why ju just at the end when I was like, just when I, when I thought I'd finished the game, I would just go into the profile and like even in my notebook here, uh, I would just write down, as I was playing, just things that didn't look right or things that weren't working, if you would, in the game. Uh, don't get me wrong, like, after now, and, and it's a shame I can't show you the older projects for this, um, but now I believe it is optimised, like, it is only playing things when it has to, uh, it's loading stuff when it should, per se, you know what I mean, so... So yeah, um, that was just a little insight of how I sort of finished the games, uh, and and obviously as I say, like on face value, if you just play it in Unity and don't connect it to the profile, you might not notice if anything is going wrong behind the scenes in Wise. Uh, it might sound fine, but it might not be fine if you know what I mean. And I've learned that a lot with coding in general. Like you can get a piece of code that works totally fine. But it might not be op optimized. A bit like with different sorts, uh, for example, like if you use a merge sort, it, it, it obviously it, using a normal binary sort uh, compared to a merge sort. Obviously, the merge sort will do it a lot quicker, but they will both do the same job. They will both sort through uh, the data that it has, but one will be a lot more optimized, and one will run a lot better on a computer, for example. So yeah, that's about it for the whole car game. So if you've stuck through all of these and you've enjoyed them, uh, be, be sure to let me know if you want to see more games in the future. Obviously, I'll still be working on games at my own time. Yeah, I, I, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you managed to learn something or, or just enjoyed watching them in general. It might be another couple months, for say, uh, until my next tutorial or an, another game that I'm working on, but... I sincerely hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you all later. See ya.